There are certain foundational behaviors that set the stage for you to be better at everything. First of all, you need in the morning. There's a long arc release of dopamine. I don't care if you live in Minneapolis in the depths of winter, you've created a summer month inside your body. Dopamine's main role in the brain and body is life force. So that mood enhancing effect, it's real. That's why you feel good in the summer months. Number one practice is There are certain foundational behaviors, do's and don'ts, that set the stage for you to be better at everything. So a lot of times people will say, how can I lift more, focus better, um, remember things better? It's like, well, let's think about the foundation of that. And that's always going to come back to two elements, and that's sleep and what I call non-sleep deep rest. Sleep is the fundamental practice or part of our 24-hour cycle. If you don't get it on a consistent basis, you are down-regulating your ability to do everything. Metabolism is screwed up, immune system is screwed up, et cetera, et cetera. However, it is not the case if you get one night's bad sleep or that if you're not sleeping perfectly that you can't perform well. But let's talk about sleep and just, uh, cause I think it's important. The goal for most people, unless you're pulling vampire shifts on, on deployment or you're a shift worker and thank you shift workers, we'll talk about shift work. You should try and get really good sleep 80% of the time, 80% of the nights of your life. The other 20%, I hope you're not getting good sleep for good reasons that you enjoy. But the point is that there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, every cell in your body has a circadian rhythm, meaning every cell has a 24 hour circadian clock that's regulated by genes. Think of these, your body is a bunch of different, millions of clocks and you need to align those clocks to a single time. This is why when you travel overseas, your gut goes off, you get sick, or uh, your thinking isn't quite right, that the clocks aren't in alignment. They're not entrained, as we say. Number one practice for everything, sleep especially, is try and get some natural light in your eyes within an hour of waking up. If you wake up before the sun, turn on a bunch of bright lights and then get sunlight in your eyes once it comes out. If there's dense cloud cover, there are still more photons, light energy coming through that cloud cover than there are coming from artificial lights. So try and get five to 10 minutes without sunglasses outside in the morning once the sun is out, most days, if not all days. This has an outsized effect on a number of things. First of all, it modulates the timing of what's called the cortisol pulse. Once every 24 hours, you're gonna get a boost in cortisol, big spike in cortisol, it's a healthy boost. It sets your temperature rhythm in motion, sets your level of alertness, your level of focus and your mood. A late shifted cortisol pulse. So imagine the kid that wakes up and spends the morning in bed or you're spending the morning in bed and you're texting or you're indoors and you're typing on the computer. That's not enough light to accomplish what I'm talking about. And then you go outside around noon or one, you're in what's called the circadian dead zone, which is the time in which light arriving at the eyes can do certain things, but it can't time this pulse. That means that cortisol pulse is gonna come in the afternoon, which means that your temperature rhythm is gonna be shifted late. And that's actually a signature of depression and anxiety and, and difficulty falling asleep. Many people are waking up and they're just spending time indoors and they're putting on sunglasses, getting in their car and driving, or there's cloud cover and they think there's no sun out. I don't mean that you actually have to stare at the sun, never stare at any light so bright it's gonna damage you, please don't, and blink as necessary. But the indirect rays from sun trigger these cells in the eyes called melanopsin ganglion cells. These ganglion cells send a signal to your hypothalamus. Then the hypothalamus releases this peptide, which is a wake up signal for your whole brain and body and sets a timer for the onset of melatonin release 16 hours later, melatonin being the hormone that makes you sleepy and makes you wanna to go to sleep. So you can imagine what happens if you don't get that light until a few hours later, everything shifted. The other thing is that you can get bright light from electronic devices early in the day, but it's not enough. You need photons from sunlight. Now, if you live in Scandinavia in the depths of winter, if you're up in like, you know, Trondheim or Aarhus or something, like don't buy an expensive daytime simulator, get one of these LED uh, light boxes for drawing. They're very inexpensive. Put that on your desk and just look at that thing for a few minutes in the morning. Not as good, but better than being in the darkness. Then when the sun's out, get outside. This is a huge, huge effect for the following reason. The signal that arrives from the eyes to the hypothalamus also triggers the release of the neuromodulator dopamine. We hear about dopamine as a feel-good molecule, but dopamine's main role in the brain and body is to drive motivation, craving, and pursuit. It is not the molecule of pleasure, it is the molecule of drive. It is life force. Dopamine is actually the molecule from which adrenaline epinephrine is manufactured. There are animals that I've worked on in the laboratory and that also in humans, it's now been shown in a beautiful study that people who get 20 to 30 minutes of light on their skin, this was a study done in Israel. So they wear an appropriate amount of clothing, but they're sleeveless, no hat, no sunglasses. They were told to go outside 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week, just in the sunshine. Ideally, they wear shorts also. They measure testosterone and estrogen in men and women, significant increases in both, and all the associated things of increased passion, blah, 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 blah. That is what they measured in the study. 
study. Why? Well, it turns out that light to the eyes, but also light to the skin. The skin is an endocrine organ. It's not just something to tattoo and hang earrings from and put clothing on. It actually, there's a pathway involving a molecule called P53 and the keratinocytes are these skin cells that when sunlight, when UVB, ultraviolet blue light penetrates the skin because it can penetrate the skin superficially, triggers these keratinocytes to stimulate a pathway that releases dopamine in the brain and body. So you feel better when you're getting light in your eyes and on your skin and you're increasing testosterone and epinephrine and dopamine increase. That's why you feel good in the summer months. People in Scandinavia know this. This is kind of spring fever. In the winter months, you want to go through every bit of effort to double or triple the amount of time that you're spending outside in the morning. So instead of 10 minutes, make it 30 minutes. We all are familiar with getting sleepy and falling asleep. That's the parasympathetic nervous system taking over. The longer we are awake, the build, longer the buildup of something called adenosine in the brain and body. And adenosine turns on the parasympathetic nervous system, suppresses the sympathetic nervous system. When we sleep, adenosine is pushed back down. What is caffeine? Caffeine effectively blocks the effects of adenosine. So here's a little trick. I don't like the word hacks because hacks imply using something for a purpose it wasn't designed for. Here we're talking about hardwired biology. But if you wake up in the morning and you didn't sleep quite as much as you would have liked, that means you still have a buildup of adenosine in your system. Let's say you immediately reach for caffeine. Great. You suppress the action of that adenosine and you will be more alert. And guess what happens? Then the caffeine wears off and the adenosine binds to the receptors with greater affinity and you have your afternoon crash. So a practice that's very useful to people is to delay the intake of caffeine by 60 to 90 minutes after waking. Allow the adenosine to be cleared out because it's not just cleared out in sleep, it's also cleared out in those kind of sleepy states of early morning. So allow it to be cleared out. The other thing that clears it out, exercise. So when you get up in the morning, you're kind of sleepy, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this, but you hydrate and train, you clear out the adenosine Adenosine. For people that have an afternoon crash, this can have tremendous benefits. Everyone that does this says, oh my goodness, I didn't understand why in the afternoon I'm crashing so hard. This will really, really help. So you're waking up. That means that your temperature is starting to rise at that time. That's why you wake up. That temperature increase triggers that cortisol release. And that's why some people wake up right before their alarm clock. It's this cortisol pulse. And two hours before that is what we call your temperature minimum. It's when your temperature is lowest that it's ever gonna be in the 24 hour cycle. So the way it works is you wake up because of an increase in core body temperature. That increase in core body temperature triggers that increase in cortisol. And by viewing light at that time, you entrain, you, you ensure that it happens at the same time the next day. The clocks of your body are entrained, they're matched to this cortisol pulse. And sometime around two or three in the afternoon, you're gonna hit your temperature maximum. You might feel a little sleepy at that time, but that's actually the time in which all your systems are kind of revving at the, at the maximum capacity. And then it's gonna to start to drop and start to drop, drop, drop. Now that drop in temperature eventually will be a full one to three de degrees below. And that's when you're gonna get sleepy and fall asleep. This is why it's important to keep the room cool at night to fall asleep. The goal here is to increase body temperature in order to be awake and to decrease body temperature in order to be asleep. If we stay with those themes, a lot of this will just fall into bins. Exercising will increase body temperature somewhat paradoxically, getting into a cold shower or cold water, everyone says, well, it must make you cold, right? Well, if you stay in there a long time, you become hypothermic, right? But let's remember the thermostat example. You have a little area in your brain called the medial preoptic area. And if you make the surface of your body cold, guess what happens? Core body temperature goes up. So if you're gonna do ice baths or cold showers, I would say do them sometime better than not at all. There's a beautiful paper published in the European Journal of Physiology in the year 2000, which took people and had them sit. They actually had them on lawn chairs in water a pool is a great way to run an experiment. So you get into cold water, that's the shock. For the first 30 seconds, for most people who are untrained, your forebrain, which is controlling decision-making, is basically suppressed in its activity and other areas are ramped up. Then what happens is when you get out of the, the cold, there's a long arc release of dopamine and epinephrine. That's what was shown in the study in humans. And that long arc of dopamine leads to a near doubling or more of dopamine and epinephrine. So that mood enhancing effect that you feel afterwards, it's real. It's based on a real neurochemical effect. And that dopamine and epinephrine will combine with the temperature increase from cortisol plus light plus exercise, all things that increase core body temperature. Now you've got increased core body temperature. You created a dopamine release, epinephrine. You've created a summer month in inside your body. I don't care if you live in Minneapolis in the depths of winter or someplace even as cold as New Hampshire, you are creating summer in your body by doing that. Now, if you live in San Diego or Los Angeles or Arizona and it's the summer and you're staying indoors and you're on your phone and you're laying in bed or you're just walking around the kitchen and you're putting on sunglasses and driving to work, guess what? You're creating a Colorado winter 
inside of your body despite the fact that the sun is out. So if you're wondering why you're slightly depressed, your metabolism is lower, your testosterone output is slightly lower than maybe you'd like it to be. There could be other reasons too, of course. But again, we're talking about modulators. I'm not saying getting sun in your eyes in the morning is gonna make your testosterone perfect. What I'm saying is you're, you're setting an internal milieu through things that increase core body temperature, dopamine, epinephrine, et cetera. And that should be done relatively early in the day. It's gonna work. <laughs> Beast. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks, brother. That was some real work. Yeah.